Okay, we're in the cube in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. And, and uh, we're here in Palo Alto, California at the home of big data, Cloudera, Inc. They obviously commercialize Hadoop and, and they're very generous to give us the space here. So we want to thank Cloudera for allowing us uh, to, to be here. Um, but Silicon Valley is great because you, all the entrepreneurs are kind of hanging out in Silicon Valley, developing new startups, big companies trying to figure out what to do, and all the entrepreneurship is here. But the other good thing is a lot of people come in and visit. So Ramin is here uh, to talk with his friends from Finland, and we're going to introduce them all. And Ramin's a, a contributor for Silicon Angle, but more importantly, he's an entrepreneur, and he lives in, in Finland, where entrepreneurship is b booming. Um, and the entrepreneurs are ahead of the government and there's a big counterculture going on in Finland and it's exciting and uh, new things are happening you guys are breaking new ground so Ramin introduce yourself and your and your friends from Finland to uh, Silicon Angle and Silicon Valley community sure so my name is Ramin uh, Ramin Darbiha I'm the founder and CEO of mysites.com uh, we are the most traffic startup in Finland we focus on cloud storage so we we've got well quite big experience in the cloud we started in 2006 uh, the idea at the time was that we're building something a bit like uh, Chrome OS, so uh, an OS in the cloud, Windows for the internet, and that didn't fly because well, we launched it two years ago, there was no iPads and, and 3G and things like that that were quite common and that, that are common nowadays. So well, what we're doing now is we're a social Dropbox, so we focus on making file sharing easier, players and things like this. That's your company? Yes. But also you're heavily involved in the startup community and you've exactly. given back to the community. So share with the folks out there some of the things you've given back and what you're doing now with entrepreneurship. So I'm part of the Alto Venture Garage, which is uh, a venue, but I think uh, Christo will do a lot better than me explaining what it is. Exce essentially it's a Y Combinator for the Nordics. And I'm one of the coaches there. So I was coaching at Summer of Startups, which was one of the two entrepreneurship programs we started in Finland. So Summer of Startups was a very interesting program because we got students who managed to raise money, 50,000 euros from the government, and, and got it to pay students to do uh, to create a startup in summer. So essentially, instead of finding a summer job, like cleaning the table or something like this, they went and they created a startup. So uh, we paid each student 750 euros per head per month. Uh, we got 10 startups created, 30 people. We got people from 10 different countries. So we had people from Uganda, people from Kenya, people from China, people and from And it was Latvia, in Helsinki, right? In Helsinki. Yeah, well, suburbs of Helsinki and Espo, <laughs> but <laughs> and, and we got another program called Bootcamp, which is a two-week program aimed at accelerating existing startups, early-stage startups. And uh, Bootcamp just finished two weeks ago, and now we brought our best startups here, and so you can see some of them now. So you're an entrepreneur and now coach. You give back to the community in Finland. You're here in Silicon Valley, connecting with us and others yep. to bridge the entrepreneurship across uh, across the world. Exactly. That's great stuff. So introduce uh, the folks here and uh, that you're teaming with and, and have them just share a little bit about what you guys are doing. So Christo here on my right is the founder of the Alto Entrepreneurship Society and Alto Venture Garage. Alto Entrepreneurship Society is the leading... Well, let, let Christo, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Micro, step up to the microphone. Uh, Thank you. Better. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so great to be here. My name is Christo Vaska. I'm, yes. I'm founder of Alto Entrepreneurship Society and Alto Venture Garage. So actually my story is a bit different that I'm just now getting into the startups and founding my first startup, fundrank.net now. But we realized two years ago that there is a huge challenge in Finland and wanted to change that culture. And it took off really well. So we created Alto Venture Garage, which Jens actually runs nowadays. And after a year, so at the beginning of this year, we started with Alto Venture Garage. So it Actually, what we do, it's the leading incubator or accelerator in Finland. So we gather the best startups from all around the Baltics and Nordics. We train them with our experienced coaches and actually we ship them. We give them a bit of seed funding and we ship them over here for six months to get feedback, to do business and, and get the, hopefully raise funding from here, too. So, I mean, entrepreneurship is, is a global phenomenon now, and we all know that. Finland is not known for having a venture capital community, as it's pretty well documented. Uh, but there's a counterculture going on. Even in Silicon Valley, a new, a new era is upon us, technically, business-wise. Talk about the, the environment in, in Finland around the entrepreneurship, that grassroots, that groundswell, that uh, emerging energy. Uh, you guys have done some work with the community. So talk about the, the environment and somehow the communities get, how the community is getting together. So sure. actually, actually, two years ago, there is a huge change going on. So two years ago, it was still much government-orientated and Nokia 
driven culture. But within the two years, I would say that the moment it's it's the most active entrepreneurship scene in a grassroots in, in whole Europe. We have a lot of good ideas bubbling around and they are just waiting to break through. But then we have these role models which came here, like there is Skype, there is GetJar, there is MySQL, now there is Angry Birds, Spotify in, Spotify in Sweden. But those role models haven't been that visible before. And they all came here or to rest of the Europe. But now what, what is happening that they are really starting to give back, as Ramin also, starting to give back to the society, and they are driving, driving the culture. And that's actually kind of the role of Alto Entrepreneurship Society, is to get those role models and increase the culture. But now there is, like two years ago, there was one event maybe in a month. Now there is three, four events in Helsinki per, per week where startups talk, pitch, and, and share their experience. And is there a lot of collaboration amongst the entrepreneurs out there right now? There is a lot of, and not only, not only in Finland, but whole Baltics. As, as we told that we are organizing these uh, Garage 48 events, which are like the startup weekends here, so that we get people from all around the places. And there is a really good engineering knowledge in, in, in Baltics, in Finland, in Russia. And we do develop great things together. So there is a lot of collaboration. And then also with, with business people and with, with entrepreneurs. So it's a so small and tight community. That everyone knows each other and willing to give back. I mean, actually, Alto Venture Garage is also a co-working space. Mm. So all the startups that participated in some of our startups and bootcamp and the previous bootcamp also, for any other startup, it's free to go and work there, and we yeah. do collaborate. That's great. Um, and so going around the horn here, go ahead, uh, is Jens. 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 So Jens. hi, everyone out there. Uh, my name is Jens, Jens Sorensen. I'm the, currently I'm the chairman of the Auto Entrepreneurship Society, which is the student-run organization by <coughs> students for students that's creating the entrepreneurial environment that we're in. Um, I was just told to move to the left just a bit, which I did. Um, <laughs> well, but we, we all noticed. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> See, it takes a bit of brains to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> From Finland, you know, you guys got to be sharp out there. We know that. Exactly. Uh, but so, actually, I'm stepping off that role pretty soon since uh, s for the past five months we've been running on our old startup expert queue, which is derived from experience questions, and we're learning companies know now what their customers are feeling about their service. Uh, as you, John, said, it's we're creating a big back-end mashup uh, where we link our system into their systems, um, allowing us to know when a service event has happened and allowing us to push a feedback question the media consumers are already in. And uh, the fact that I'm doing this startup these days is very much down to the environment that's been created over is the past two years. Is there a public URL for that? Uh, www.experq.com. And funrank.net was uh, Christoph's, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, We're making sure we get the, is there a website? Is all this located on the Alto Ventures website? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so altovg.com. Um, Not to be confused with Palo Alto. Um, it's got two A's in it. A-A-L-T-O, right. which is great. Um, so, I mean, you guys like entrepreneurs? You, guys doing, you like startups, guys? Yes. Yeah, it's oh, fun, it's isn't awesome. it? It's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, you're young point. enough. I'm old and I can't do them anymore. It's actually, the big turning point for me was um, summer of 2009. I spent four months in an investment bank. Summer internship, the basic thing that you usually get out of college. Yeah. Not the basic thing, but I mean, yeah, get on the treadmill, get yeah. some coffee for all the big guys, yeah. read the analysis, do the real work. Yeah, 15 hours a day. You're playing golf. I'm, I'm still doing 15 <laughs> hours a day, but you know, now I'm thing. very much enjoying it. It's my own thing. And yeah. as I said, the ecosystem around it uh, here in Silicon Valley, everybody's pretty much breathing the growth entrepreneurship field. Uh, back home, uh, it's only been in the past two years that we've actually been able to see the same kind of. Uh, Aura, I'd say. The yeah, I mean, 10 years ago when I did my first startup, you didn't really see, you saw very few non-U.S. Uh, guys yeah. hanging around. Yeah. Now, global entrepreneurship is booming. Right. And it's right. exciting. I mean, I think you, I, we met together online exactly. with, through Silicon Angle and through Silicon Angle Labs, just collaborating. Yes. And next thing you know, you're contributing. Now you guys are here. And it's great. I, I totally dig it. Right. And the whole point is actually just getting similar-minded people uh, around you. Yeah. And people who are willing to you know, get an idea and actually work on it. So it's not just rhetoric, it's actually a motoristic, you know, reaction to your idea. And All right. that's what leads stuff to happen. Regarding what you just said, I think it's very important for us because when you're based in Europe, there's not that many success stories that happen out there, right? Yeah. There, there aren't that many startup entrepreneurs that you can go on like learn from. So the guys are here, we need to be international, especially in Finland where you have a population of five million people. 
you can't just go on and we do have a lot of success stories from Finland. We have Linux, we have SSH, we have MySQL, we have IRC, you know, that there's a lot of really great things on the web that come from there, but there's not that much business experience. So this, that's why we have to be even more proactive, pushy, and just be there. And yeah, talk and the great guys. thing about you know real-time web and real-time internet, whether it's mobile or just online, is that you can literally have collaboration, You know, no pun intended, FaceTime, like with the iPhone, you got Skype video, you have all kinds of collaborative tools that are very robust now. And you got yeah. your venture, for example, and you know, doing all kinds of cool stuff as well. So you know, I just see the future's bright for what, I, what I'm gonna see is a global collision of entrepreneurship of great new companies, new kind of weird relationships developing. And one and of the cool productivity things, should be great. One of the cool things actually that the U.S. is bringing up is the potential for the entrepreneurship visa. Uh, you know, the fact is that a lot of stuff in most fields happens here in Silicon Valley. So allowing us to come and actually experience uh, that through programs such as the entrepreneurship visa, fantastic. Yeah. Or startup yeah. visa, is it called? I think it's called a startup visa. Startup visa, yeah. but still, yeah. yeah. It's a good, it's, you know, Brad and uh, Dave worked on that. Brad uh, Feld and Dave McClure, Chevron from uh, uh, SGV. Eric uh, Rees. Eric Rees, yeah, all those guys, great stuff. And, you know, we all believe in it. My fear is just the government in the U.S. Get, got to get out of the way, just rubber stamp it. You know, right. And, you know. But it's just as bad over here with the government. They're trying to regulate venture capital and these other things. So actually, to I'll take my politics out of it. But I'm, you know, net neutrality. Got to love that. To showcase that actually, we're it's not just Helsinki and Finland. Uh, we have a couple of guys from Latvia who are actually part okay, of our guys, group as well. Okay, guys, step up to the microphone. Bring, let's bring them up to the mic. So hi, my name is Kaspers. I'm from Latvia. We were one of the teams that participated in the boot camp with Auto people, and we were selected to come here as one of the four winning teams of that event. Uh, yeah, so we are here with our startup. Um, it's called Eklinda. It's really good. <laughs> well, like most of the people here, we are the founders. And it's really fun to see that mostly people here are talking about startups, talking about uh, funding and uh, ideas. They're just out there. I mean, today we were walking in the streets and a lady just recognized uh, people from Alto just by looking at the logo on the T-shirt. So... <laughs> Yeah, you guys are, your brand's growing like crazy <laughs> yeah. since you got in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Keep on wearing those t-shirts, you know? We got our sticker on Richard Scoble today. Yeah. Robert, Robert Scoble. Yeah. Not Robert Richard, Scoble. not Richard, but, you know, Scoble, nice. Robert, Robert Scoble is great supporter of entrepreneurship. He has been a big proponent of, uh, of the user community and entrepreneurship. And, you know, you got to commend Robert. I've always loved his uh, nose for good stories, the right stories and uh, you know protecting users and doing the right thing so you know you want robert on your side for sure uh, with, with your program so what else is happening any uh, well, you guys you guys have a reputation already in palo alto uh here is having a good time right having a well, good time i can continue it's like uh well i'm ernest i'm from latvia also and i'm on the team with caspers and uh, besides having been co-founder for the startup uh, i also tried to move uh, push the startup culture back in Latvia. So I'm sucking out the ideas and the experience of these guys, what they are doing in Finland, and also here by visiting co-working spaces, incubators, seeing the stuff happens here to bring it back and push the culture. What's the biggest thing holding back the culture? Is it fear? Is it risk? Is it the money? Uh, All the it above? might be that we don't yeah. have that big ship which leaves trail behind it, like uh, uh, these guys have... Skype. Uh, yeah, no, the Estonians had Skype. Yeah. Uh, Lithuanians got uh, Gedjar. And we don't have that ship which leaves the trail of professionals, ideas, wow, the dreaming things. That's you guys. Things. Maybe. Yeah, we are, we are now like a <laughs> Move small... Move to Palo Alto. Is that yeah, the social network said? Yeah, we are a small boat going and... Said, Move to Palo Alto. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That's, that's, we are considering that. Th that's one of the things we are looking around. That's exciting. Good stuff. All right. Anything else to add? Well, actually, regarding the question you asked, because like, so, so Christo and I are super vocal about about the uh, issues that are preventing entrepreneurship, especially in Finland. But before you get into that, tell people your blog address, if you can, um, your blog, because I know your blog is very well read. In so I'm, I'm contributing to Arctic Startup. Uh, so it's arcticstartup.com. And so there we do coverage of, of, of the Nordic startups. Uh, I've done some writing, of course, on Silicon Angle yep. and a little bit recently on Read Write Web. Uh, about Who? the Read Write Web. 
I've never heard of them. <laughs> no, they're not good. The, the, great site. No, we like. love Read Right Web. You know. <laughs> but Marshall's great over there. Scratch that Richard one. Richard McManus. Like no, no, they're great. They're right. good. We love those guys. They do in-depth coverage. But they're one of the good blogs out there that has really good product coverage. Compared with others. Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 I know all the bloggers, you know, so they're, they're all friends. So I'm just joking. So, um, so I've been doing some of that, uh, but the things we've been doing, uh, we, we've been hammering a lot on Arctic Startup, for example, yep. uh, while the, all the public funding issues and, and the, the, the culture issues that we have in Finland. So basically what happens there is that that Finland is ranked the worst in Europe in terms of, of uh, how many people, how many students want to become entrepreneurs. And we also, uh, as a consequence, obviously, that have the highest proportion of, of elderly entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who happen to be lifestyle entrepreneurs. So if I may jump in here, it's I think the culture is changing amazingly fast at the moment. But there is, there is a challenge. The challenge there is around the fact that government and big corporations it has built in in past really much around those things so if you think about the best students and best entrepreneurs uh, or i would say more experienced people they are still looking at the government and big corporation side what they want to achieve in our life not that much striving to become entrepreneurs so that's why mm -hmm. it's really really important to bring people here and well, the market's not only Finland. I mean, the government would have a protectionist view on local products, maybe. But now you have the Internet. It's global. You can hang a yep. mm -hmm. website, shingle, and social network anywhere and collect revenue. You don't, the government can, can circumvent the government. I mean, just you don't need the government. You don't need to do a business deal with so anyone the problem with that, Finland. The problem with that is, that is that the incentives we have in Finland are, are exactly the opposite. Because there is a lot of public funding that is available pretty much exclusively for consultants. So if you become a consultant, you can get a lot of easy money from the government, from government funds, different big companies getting that. And they pay you essentially for free. Like th it's, it's not a great job. Pocket. Great and you vacation plan. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, have a nice yeah. kids, family. And, and when you combine that yeah. easy money. Cushy life. The fear of Create no value. <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. consultants. Yeah. I mean, that's all they do is get the next gig, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? Exactly. But, but when you when you bring these guys, so we actually have forty people traveling with us here in Silicon Valley and you, you, from Finland, and you bring them here for a week, and they suck in the information, and they they get really, ex really, really, really inspired about this place. And when they go back there, they tell their friends and their professors yeah. that like how it is here and bring the role models and stuff so it's it's i mean that's the the change that finland needs and that's actually ultimate it's a great role. ecosystem silicon valley is a great yeah. place and i moved from the east coast here and uh you know even in boston area where i lived at the time it was entrepreneurship obviously you have mit you have babson and northeastern you know mm -hmm. the, the best schools there and uh Entrepreneurship is encouraged, but there was still even that kind of leftover fear of failure. And if you failed, you were like, oh, like almost like there's no second chance. So yeah. I, I find that, you know, the, the failure is an honor out here mm -hmm. if you learn from it and you don't do the same things over and over again. So, you know, people like risk takers and there's a, a community that kind of protects that. So people watch your back. It's kind of like a, you know, uh, you know, angel on your shoulder, if you will, around here for people yeah. who take those risks. Um, out in other countries, if you fail, you're outcast. And people don't want to take a chance. And I noticed yeah. that in the Netherlands is that um, in, in the Netherlands is a culture of risk takers. But if you've got a scientist working for a big company, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, if I leave and fail, they won't let me back in. So it was a fear of failure, of losing the cushy, Absolutely. nice job that they had. Exactly. And we um, actually organized National Fail Day back in Finland just a few months ago, inspired <laughs> by inspired by FailCon here. So that's, I mean, it's changing fast. And actually, yeah. I don't want to be in my car on that day. <laughs> <laughs> National know. Fail Day, yeah. Oh, but uh, the, actually, FailCon was a big eye-opener for yeah. us last yeah. year because we, we saw all these famous people talking about their fuck-ups, you know, and they yeah. Mm, yeah. and it was really, really good. You, you mentioned Tina Seeley. One of her, yeah. her cliches and, and great things is that, you know, the fail resume. Yeah. She asked the students to put together a yeah. resume of all their <laughs> failures. Yeah. And, and it's inspiring because they go, wow, I never thought of it that way. In a way, that's the learning, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, shout out to Tina Seelig at Stanford, who you, I think you're going to be meet with her, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, great person, great group over there. She's actually on our advisory board. For she the is? Good, yeah. good. She's great. 
So actually it's funny that at some point it changes because if you think about small children, they learn about failing. They fell down and fell down all over again. They iterate and then they learn to walk. Mm -hmm. And then at some point when you turn, I don't know, adolescent, like 13, 14 years old, you like start hate failing. So we should go back yeah, to entrepreneurs that. don't love to fail believe me you talk to any entrepreneurs like <laughs> they don't wake up in the morning and go hey i want to fail today you know they, they're pushing the envelope yeah, because yeah. they're failing and and the secret that i have uh, learned and observed is minimize your fail don't make big failures you know try to make little ones and grow from those and and uh yeah, I think you'll be okay. And like I said, you guys are on the right track. I think you know the funding is a big issue. Yeah. If you guys can get outside the government funding, that'd be fantastic. That's fine. Um, but yeah, this whole co-working collaboration is fantastic. Let me just give you a quick analogy, actually, about failure. I like uh, Tina Seelig brought it to my mind. I attach it to my hobby. I skydive. Um, so people say I'm a risk taker, but no, actually, I'm a risk minimizer because I like to skydive. So every skydive for me is like an exit from a company. But before I jump out I check all my gear very very closely so I'm actually minimizing my risk throughout and I think entrepreneurs throughout are skydivers in the sense that they don't like to fail they're not trying to go out and take risks they're doing their best to minimize the risks inherent to what they're doing yeah and you know that's a great example I mean I think that you know that's a great because if you screw up you don't, yeah. it doesn't work you're dead yeah. I think you know investment. It's not that bad in entrepreneurship. You don't—they don't actually kill well, you, you know, for I failing. Mean, if you take other people's money, you know, like investors, they might. like, like uh, venture capital, sort of people's money, they're hoping that the shoot opens. Yeah. But you're packing it. Right. So in a way, there's a big trust element that you have with with taking money and forming teams. Is as a leader, mm -hmm. you're the you're packing that shoot, and you want to hope that it opens. Right. So you know, to me, that's the entrepreneurial spirit: is to navigate that risk, minimize right. that risk, but understand. Maybe we do a test jump or, you know, yeah, you kind of exactly. figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, point is that entrepreneurship. There's been some big implosions, though, on Silicon Valley. You know, yeah. Point <laughs> is that it's not yeah. it's not risk taking entrepreneurship. It's 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 minimizing risks inherent to what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, the inherency of risk is very strong in entrepreneurship. But one thing I'd like to actually invite everybody out there listening to our uh, Finland night tomorrow in San Francisco. What is it? Six in Parisoma at 6.30? 6 o'clock, six yeah. 6.30 at Parisoma. Yeah. We have Angry Birds. We have Get Jar. A lot of cool people. All of our startups, our whole group. And guests. And guests, of course. But and pizza. On. Oh, we have sponsored pizza. pizza and drinks. Just, is there a Giants game going on? That's uh, going to be a parking nightmare. $100 uh, for parking up there today. We were up there visiting but this uh, is tomorrow. TV. Uh, they, I don't know if they're playing. They're playing tonight. I know is yeah. this Soma? We were up at Justin TV today. They wanted sixty dollars for parking, and then bumped a hundred at noon. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, the drinks will be free. So oh, we'll be fine. Well, so where's the where's it going to be? Paris Soma. It's uh, it's downtown San Francisco. Okay. Check so it out on Facebook. Search for yeah. Finland Night. Finland Night. Yeah, I don't All think right. you'll miss it. We have Peter Vesterbacher from uh, Rovio behind Angry, Angry Birds, Birds and um, Ilya Lars from Get Jar. A lot of cool other people. So good. All Get right. Jar just crashed after Angry Birds was released on Android. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> Get on that. Mark, mm. Scoop. It's already out there, isn't it, though? It's already, it's already it's out there. Yeah. 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 We're going to talk about it tomorrow. All right, though. guys, we're going to wrap up here. We're inside the Cube in our Palo Alto studio. Um, soon, to, uh, building out slowly and surely. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. And uh, Thank you. great to Thank see you, you and meet you. Thanks and a lot. Great to see you in person. And uh, good luck with all your trip. And uh, go get the word out and get some cash, get some opportunities, <laughs> and uh, do some biz dev, meet some new people. Have a great oh. time.